Ah, oh, the evocative glug glug of a peerless vintage cascading into gossamer thin crystal. Oh, for Pete's sake, man, just drink it. Now, I like a glass of wine. I like to drink it. But somehow, I've ended up lost in France with a bloke who will only talk about it. His name is Oz Clark, and he's a wine expert. What's the first thing that comes into your mind about that wine? Fruit. <laughs> We're now halfway through our trip. So far, I've been trying to teach James how to talk about wine. Definite bonfire in there. And a definite barbecued sausage. Make wine. Voila, le vin rouge. And the do's and don'ts of matching food with wine. That tastes shit, doesn't it? Absolutely right. This week it's how to spot the Merlot from the Mourvedre and the Semillon from the Sauvignon. It's, oh, oh, that's a nice one. As I try to teach this bottomless pit about different grape varieties. Come, fill the cup. James! And then challenge him to blend his very own wine. I think I might have cocked it up. We've been travelling northeast and have now entered the magnificent Rhone Valley. It's best known for warm and spicy reds made from the Syrah and Grenache grapes. Those are two of the best part of a thousand different grape varieties that are used to make wine throughout the world. So, which ones has James already heard of? Um, right. Seedless. Uh, red ones and green ones. Oh, you're just trying no, to be smart, smart okay, James. Right. Chardonnay. Take it seriously. Chardonnay is yeah. a grape. Um, uh, Sauvignon. Well done. The Sauvignon Blanc grape is a white grape. It gives green, sharp flavoured wines. Chardonnay is a white grape. gives softer, golden flavoured wines. So the most, the most important thing to grasp in wine is that each grape variety has a different flavour to give to the wine. Learn about the different flavours in grape varieties and you, you are already on the way to becoming a wine expert. Our first stop is Hermitage in the Northern Rhone. It's home to one of the most influential winemakers in the modern wine world. We're going to see the called Michel Chapout here this morning. He's a seriously big cheese in the Rhone Valley. He's got hundreds of hectares of vines. He makes enormous amounts of wine from relatively cheap to fantastically expensive. But he's a very important guy. James could learn a lot from this, so I do hope he appreciates the opportunity. There's a Renault Twinger, which was never officially sold in Britain, but was considered a very interesting car. Oh, James, does it always have to be about cars? But that's, that is an absolutely perfect example of French driving and parking. Oh. You're wrecking his Renault. That's shocking. That's why you can't bring a nice car to France. And the trick to French parking is you drive around town looking for a space a foot shorter than your car, yeah. then you try and get into it. When you hit the car behind, you get out and go, it's not my fault. Sounds like cobblers. Oh, well, taste the wine, see what you think. Why have you brought your handbag? Oh, this has got my books in it. I mean, you know, well, it's actually, it's got what research or research books. Um, it's got a book with about 20 verses of the Rubai out of Omar Khayyam, I thought you might like. It's got poetry, I've got songs in here, you know. Why didn't I thought you, you might... It? Why didn't you leave it in the car? Then you wouldn't look like such a Jesse when you went to meet the big cheese. Well, and... oh, blimey, he's got a shadow. Yeah, excellent. See what I mean? As you said, he makes the most expensive wines in the Rhone Valley. I'm not surprised. Actually, that's the Silver Wraith. The place is actually packed with old cars. France is very good on old cars. They're into it. This is obviously a man to be taken very seriously. Bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour. Monsieur Chapoutier is best known for his Hermitage wines. They're made from very precious Syrah vineyards and can command from around 40 pounds a bottle to a whole lot more. In Hermitage, it is one of the oldest vineyards in France. We work with one grape. We have big diversity of soil, so we can make comparison with the same winemaking process and the same vine growing process. Monsieur Charpoutier is very, very intelligent and theatrical. From one place, you can see the force geological period. And he knows about the wine. Mm. And I leave for the taste. And I've never seen anybody who's quite so impassioned and quite so declamatory about everything. The yeast has been created 
to help the decomposition of the vegetal. And he's the only person who's managed to shut Oz Clark up. He hasn't said anything. He's just stood there all wide-eyed. When you have life, you have two goals. First goal is to create the next generation. Second goal is to spread. We go? We go take the car? Do you we take your Willy's Jeep? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And, um, and a bottle? I think Catherine is coming with. Something to try? Yeah. Okay, she's beginning on very well with uh, Michelle. I've got all these bags with me. I mean, you're absolutely right. I'm carrying too many bags around. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. GIs didn't have handbags. Oh, I just got in. This is fantastic. It's exactly the type of wine trip I was after. <laughs> I oh, come on, old man. Ah. <laughs> got it. I was under attack in the Second World War. I'd never make it. Wines from Syrah grapes are characterised by intense richness and spiciness and ooze with blackcurrant and raspberry flavours. But the grapes only reveal these flavours once the wine is made, as James will now explain. Here, in all these vineyards, we only have one grape, the Syrah, or the Shiraz, as it's more commonly known. Yeah. The, the character of the wine comes after fermentation, not from the grape itself. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. That must be a wine fact. All grape varieties love to get high. Generally, the steeper the slope, the more sunlight they get and the more flavoursome the wine. However, the unpredictable factor is rain, which can stop the grapes ripening so the bitter tannin in their skins doesn't soften. If you have a wet year, colder year, you will have some harder tannins and some people will prefer the harder tannins. OK, but that's a wine fact. Wet years give you a, a, a more tannin in the wine, a more dry... More tannin. More dry sensation on the tongue. That's what yeah, the tannin exactly. does. Exactly. Yeah, yes. you have a different yes. effect. Is that a wine fact? No, it's a very complicated no, wine fact. No, just no, let me no, have a wine it's, fact. No, it's not a wine fact, because say. everything you say, Michel will say, well, some people have the right I know, to but he's that. Others have the right to think something else. else. I'm trying to just... Remember, I am an amateur. I'm actually finding this all strangely interesting. And I like the man. I think he's really great. And what he says is fantastically convoluted, but it does make sense. Well, I'm glad Michelle's fired up your interest, James, because, as usual, I'll be testing you out later on. If you fancy trying some reasonably inexpensive Rhone Valley Syrah, look out for wines with Crow's Hermitage on the label. Most shops will have a spicy-flavoured one for under a tenner. Most wines aren't made of single grape varieties, they're blends, like the ones produced near the village of Saint-Maurice by father and son team Alain and Philippe Viré. What do we do? Uh, well, we're in the back. In the, back, in the, in the, the truck, yeah. yeah. Domaine Viré White is usually a blend of the lesser-known Viognier, Claret, Marsan and Roussan grapes. But it's not just unusual grapes that set the Virés apart from other winemakers. They have, well, very unusual growing techniques. Um, let me guess. Human sacrifice? James. Domaine Viré is the only vineyard in the world to embrace Cosmo culture. It's a mystical approach to grape growing that's allowed them to discover the best possible location for their vineyards. OK, so, so Monsieur Vire has got, uh, got his sort of dowsing things out to sort of show the energy, which is in these great many years, these great big rocks that he's planted in the soil. Yeah, what sort of energy? I don't know yet. This energy, uh, it's uh, like an uh, electric system. Yeah. Apparently, the stones help capture cosmic energy from the sky and spread it throughout the vines which are planted nearby. My honest belief is that this is paganism and I will be struck down at any second. Fairly sure it's dangerous, subversive stuff. And you have to be very careful what you say because, you know, they're into crucifixion and all that stuff around here. Oz is open-minded, but I still think it's a load of old twaddle. Tell me when you want some magic. No. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. How do you know you didn't? I magic was not is disappearing. No, no, no. The magic is disappearing. You're trying to do that, James. I was not trying to do that. 
Look. In that, that's different magic to mine. That's right? the energy the, 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 in my no, penis my, doing that. Oh, and it's gone off again. It usually does. Yes, that's about four or five seconds. That's about right for you. Okay, trying to locate cosmic energy is one thing, but the next stage of this cosmology lark really is Olympic standard weirdness. It involves playing this plinky plonky music to natural oils which are stored in a homemade phallus. This is a piece of plastic uh, piping, and there's holes, holes cut in the side, and it's playing notes. I don't know, where did this bit come from? It's amagram system. No, so this piece here, is what's that made from? Oh, it's glass. Yes. Oh, it's glass. a bowl. It's classic. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Supposedly, this gives energy to these essences and take it down to a sort of a, a muck spreader that they've got down there and put this, like, you know, an eighth of a pint of liquid into this vast, great um, water tank and then spray hectare after hectare Extracts of lavender, extracts of rosemary, eye of newt, leg of frog. I really like that tractor. It's very handsome. Don't you think? So, what does mystic wine actually taste like? This is Domaine Vire's La Coulée d'Or 2001. Around £20 a bottle. On the cuvée is Coulée d'Or, it's my white wine. Uh, Qu'est-ce que c'est le grape variety? The grape variety, uh, are Jaunier and uh, Roussan, Clairette and Marsan. It's a mix of different grapes from Rhone Valley. Four, four grapes or five? Four grapes. Four grape varieties. The Viognier and Clairette should deliver aromatic, flowery flavours, perhaps apricot too, while the Marsan and Roussan grapes should add a touch of herb and honeysuckle, but frankly, who knows with these guys? Already five years old. So you're starting, you've lost the, the fresh awareness and you've got something whiny. That's instead. sort of almost tomato-y, beany scent again. I was going to say, it was, it, it, it's that, it's that rather marvellous sweaty scent that is yeah. one of the things that white Which wine gets, it gets old. They actually smell slightly B.O.-like. Yeah, but there's a, there's, a, there's a very beautiful, it sounds really stupid, but there is a very beautiful sort of body odour thing about a good white wines as they age. Yes, it's as though you've actually smeared some butter on somebody. Wow. It smells very strange, but it tastes really good, and it also tastes quite... Um... Now, this may just be because I've been wandering around the, around the hills with the bits of copper and, and the magical tunes and things, but it tastes... It tastes sort of alternative. It tastes to wine what a nut cutler does to a Sunday roast, if you see what I mean. That's what I mean by Sunday roast with the nut cutler. Well, I prefer a Sunday roast, but I like this. That's enough magic crystals for one day. I'm off to camp to cook dinner. I've left Oz at the carve, coming under the influence of the planets. He's got his notebook out and he's very excited about the 2003 white or something. Although I have to say, I've stolen a bottle of the 2002 red. And I take back everything I say about the mystic winemakers. They are brilliant. And this is a truly fabulous drink. It goes particularly well with itself. The wines are fantastically different. I think Oz has now completely baffled those really very charming French cosmologists that we've been talking to all day. He will be getting enthusiastic about grape varieties. That, that wine smells of, 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 of black currants and Blackberries, it's cassis and your, those are really rare things down here. And they actually won't be able to follow what he's saying, because I can't follow what he's saying when he gets like that. And I'm a fellow English speaker. Sooner or later, they will get bored and make an excuse and he will have to come back down to the campsite. <laughs> James, I've got you some wonderful stuff here. What have you been doing cooking for? Well, I cooked so your sweet. noodles and as usual, you were late and they're spoiled. And what have I brought you? I've brought you some of the most stunning red wine that you could possibly drink. Well, you what? might say that, but I'd already nicked a bottle anyway. I've got something better. I bet you haven't. I bet you are bloody have. Now, the Grenache vine is the most widely planted black grape in the world. And this is from 100-year-old vines. And I have to say, it is the absolute spot-on um, 
<laughs> what am I talking about? It's an, it's the absolute spot on example. That's as far as I can get. What, not full enough? Okay, no, here we go. No, no, no. A, uh, a glass of me or what? We gave her a wine tasting moment. So this is 100 year old vines. Yeah. Grown Up on that by hill. mystics with magic crystals and bits of copper wire yeah. through which they divine the energy path of the grape. So here we go. Does it actually taste any good? It's the only thing. Does it taste good? Yep. It is pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> wow. The thing is... That is... Isn't that fantastic? I do think it has some minerals. Yeah. It tastes those great big stones, those walloping great it's stones really in the oily vineyard. as well. It's quite an oily and, wine. And herbs. You know those herbs that get shoving up your nose? Yes. That sort of fantastic... Yep. Like thyme and, and, and... Yeah. What was it? Uh, those, those pine trees. And then you've got this... this sort of sense of utterly ripe fruit, which is just sort of teetering over into a sort of muscovado brown sugar kind of richness. I've no idea what you're talking about, but I will acknowledge that that is a nice drop, as we used to say in Yorkshire. The conversation flowed well into the early hours, as did the cosmic nectar. Do you like beans and sausages or sausages with beans? I like sausages with beans. Coming up, sir. I want this some washing. Mm. I'm running out of knickers. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Days ago. We're heading for the town of Tavel, famous for that fruity girl's drink, rosé. But first, a deviation to deal with our rather embarrassing laundry problem. I've, I've seen something like this in, the, in a school textbook about the history of the Romans. Have you got any washing powder? Merci beaucoup. That's so embarrassing. It's, but I don't understand why we can't embrace the current century. I know you're reluctant to do it, and go to a laundrette. Your pants are disgusting. What's wrong with them? Those, those are funny pants, aren't they? You've got... I've seen boxes. I mean, they sort of give you more freedom. Those really tight brief pants make you look gay and they also make you stare off. That's that... a well-known fact. Is it? For the first time in my life, I allowed a woman, i.e. my girlfriend, to go out and buy me some new pants for this trip. But she said all the old pants are full of holes. Which is how I like them. Well, that keeps you reasonably fresh, doesn't it? And it keeps you aerated. aerated yeah. And that's what I got things with bloody flowers on. In 1989, the Jaguar XJS convertible was the favoured transport of city slickers and merchant bankers. Today, it's a clothes horse. Our next stop is Domaine du Gencier, where Marine Roussel's reds are as warm hearted and spicy as the lady herself. Which, of course, James doesn't fail to notice. Marine is also famous for her delectable rosé wines, and James can't wait to show off his limited knowledge. Rosé wine is made with the red grape, oui. yes, that's but, the, true. but the skins are removed yeah. before it goes to dark. But this one is quite dark, it's quite red. This is probably yeah. what claret looked like it's, in the it's... old days of the wine geese Irish merchants and other things I've read on a poster somewhere. No, you didn't. I taught them to you in the car. Here we go. It smells very rosy. Very nice. It's full body. Is it? Yeah. I think it's quite minerally as well. It's yeah. very fresh. The richness uh, becomes of the, um, the fact it's a blend of several uh, grapes. Ah, good. Yeah. Which ones? Uh, so in the rose, it's Grenache. Senso, uh, it's finesse, Senso, and Syrah. They're all and red the, ones. The complexity of the three variety grapes. Oh, God, here he goes. Mmm, <laughs> mmm. I mean, you just squash the grapes, really, and let them ferment. That's essentially what we're making is. And then we drink it, and we do this, and we go... Yeah, that's nice. Or, you know, ugh, that's a lot of filthy frog grog. It's uh, 
very funny way to speak about wine. I think um, she's terrific. She likes the artistry of it, which I, you know, I appreciate. We've only been here ten minutes and James has already knocked back several glasses of rosé. I suppose it's too much to hope that he'll be more reserved with Marine's array of aromatic reds. Drink. Come, fill the cup. James, I'm actually getting a little irritated about this fact that I can't take you to a wine tasting without you hovering the stuff back as though it's a wretched public bar. He spends half the time, you know, pouring wine down his throat, serves himself all alone, doesn't wait to be asked, you know, no, what good manners, James? Oh, no, no good manners. He does get cross with me because he thinks I'm a drunk. You drink wine and you drink beer so that you can talk balls to your friends. That's what it's for. I'm amazed that the National Pub Association doesn't have you as its spokesman, then. I mean, the amount of rubbish you managed to come out with... How many glasses of that, James? Just five glasses? This is a wine tasting. It's All I've done is sniff this stuff for so far. I love You've it. had three quarters of a bottle. It's I mean, you won't nice. even be able to walk out the door at this rate. But well, you're driving. I'm too right, I am. Over the last few days, I've been trying to teach James about different grape varieties. Soon, I'll be putting his knowledge to the test. But first, a quick detour to what is probably the Rhone Valley's most famous location. Right, give me three concise wine facts that I need to know about Chateauneuf de Pap in... I'm going to give you eight seconds from now. <laughs> Chateauneuf de Pap is, is not just a, a single wine, it's a town and it's a region which makes lots of wines, dozens and dozens of producers. Secondly, um, uh, Chateauneuf de Pap uses 13 different grape varieties, the, the most of, in any, any appellation in France. Thirdly, Chateauneuf de Pap is never cheap. It's <laughs> Nerf said. No, no, not Nerf said. Not yes. Nerf said. Not Nerf said. If you buy a Chardonnay de Pape, you need to go 15, no, no. 20, 25 quid. You see 10 pound bottles of Chardonnay de Pape in That's the shop, and pounds. they're no good. Now that Oz has armed me with all the facts I'll ever need to know about Chardonnay de Pape, I feel absolutely no obligation to attend his next class. Oz wants to go and taste all 13 grape varieties, and I just haven't, I haven't got the strength, to be honest. Apart from which, I'd drink them all, and then I'd just be slaughtered again, and he'd get cross with me. So I'd rather leave him on his own, so that he can be undisturbed in his degustation. You don't know what you're missing, mate. This is Chateau Beaucastel. It grows all 13 of the grape varieties permitted by the local appellation, or wine authority. My guide is son of the house, Pierre Perrin. Firstly, can I say, I'm really sorry that James, my... Uh, a colleague uh, hasn't come. I mean, uh, he seems completely incapable of doing more than one uh, tasting a day. This is probably the only place in the world where you can taste these 13 different grape varieties. Um, I've wanted to do this for years, and I thought I'd better put myself absolutely under the cosh, do it blind, see whether I can get 13 Right. Oz would rather do this on his own without me there supposedly being rude to his host. And meanwhile, to be honest, I'm very happy doing what I would normally do in France, which is sitting in a small, slightly grubby bar and um, enjoying a beer in the company of this rather magnifique, big, tough Frenchman whose father was probably in the resistance. And I think this is terrific. Monsieur, uh, an autre beer, s'il vous plaît? Well, red or white, I've actually no idea. It smells nice and rich. I mean, actually, to be honest, with this wind, it's not that easy to smell things, but... At this precise moment, I suspect a certainty, I would say, that he's pulling that face. Um, but he'll be absolutely as happy as a king doing that, Oz. He's been left on his own with 13 grape varieties, but there is no better scenario for that man. God, I just said that was a Grenache. <laughs> no, it's one. Ah, oh, my second choice would be uh, Syrah. That's probably wrong as well. <laughs> yeah, good. Tell me what it is. It's Mauvais. Ah, oh, Mauvais, the dreaded Mauvais. Right, that's wrong. Sasso. No, it's, it's Grenache. The, the most acid grape I can think of around here is Pickpool. Uh, no. Ah, damn. Hmm, I wonder how he's doing. A little bit thin, a little bit acid, a little bit bitter. Well, uh, uh, that seems to me like Sasso. No. No. Damn, what is it? That's a Cunoise. I reckon it's white. Is that? Is it white? It is white, yeah. Oh, thank God for that. You've got the <laughs> colour right. Um, and I think it is... 
Claret. It is claret. <laughs> <laughs> Good God. Good job. Oh, I thought I was going to get... It was going to be 13 nil to the Perrins. Oh, thank goodness for that. My final score was just three out of 13, which either goes to show how complicated this grape variety business can be, or is a devastating comment on my palate. Right, now it's time for James's test. This is Chateau Hospitalet. It's surrounded by 250 acres of vineyards which grow primarily Syrah, Mourvedre and Grenache grapes. This is uh, the hairy James. Very well, thank this you. Is the man behind the chateau is winemaker, ex-French rugby international and altogether cool dude, Gérard Bertrand. Like most winemakers, Gérard and his team create blended wines. They weigh up the unique qualities of each grape variety and then combine them in different amounts to create the wine with the flavour they want. It's quite interesting. There's quite a lot of sunshine in this mm. flavour. It's very interesting because maybe we will put only two or three percent in the final blend of this, you know, because it's important to manage the percentage of different varietals yes. in the final blend. Good. I've challenged James to make a blend of his own. His final effort will be judged by Gérard. First up, it's the Syrah. Well, I'm going to put about 70% of the Syrah in, because that is the guts of Cuvée. Ross Biff. Now remember, Syrah is the intensely rich and spicy grape. Now, let me... Next up, Mourvedre. Interesting dryness in the throat. Mm -hmm. More, less fruitiness, less, it's less full-bodied on the tongue than the other one. It's not as strong as it smells, but the lingering aftertaste is more metallic. It tastes more stainless steel. I think I need about 15 millilitres of that. 15. Oh no, 10. 10. 10, 10 maybe. Yeah. And then what's this grape? Grunache. Mm, there you see, this, this is where you get the, the heat and the, and the slight. The suddenness, that's where you get that sense of the sun just blazing down on the vineyards. But there's also. Shriveling up those grapes. <clears throat> there's also the mystery of the Orient in there somewhere. I think I'll finish it off with that. Right, that's 20% Grenache, 10% Mourvedre, and 70% Syrah. Has he made a decent wine? This is my blend, OK. Let's have a little aeration. And a little quiet, please. This is a truly historic moment. I think I might have cocked it up. I can drink it. It's very good. It's very drinkable. James is a genius, you know. Thank you. I really hate to hear you say that. <laughs> Merci. Merci, monsieur. It's superb. I never thought I'd get this excited about it. It's really, it's terrific. I'm very happy. And you're driving. Why don't you go and wait in the car? That's what chauffeurs do. Hi, James. For more information about blends and grape varieties, log on to bbc.co.uk forward slash food. Next week, we relieve the world's most expensive vineyard of some of its prized assets. Leg it. And James faces his toughest challenge yet when I test him on an ancient concept that lies at the very heart of French wine. French terroir, English cobblers. Ah, the evocative glug-glug of a peerless vintage cascading into gossamer thin crystal. Oh, for Pete's sake, man, just drink it. Now, I like a glass of wine. I like to drink it. But somehow, I've ended up lost in France with a bloke who will only talk about it. His name is Oz Clark, and he's a wine expert. What's the first thing that comes into your mind about that wine? Fruit. <laughs> We're now halfway through our trip. So far, I've been trying to teach James how to talk about wine. Definite bonfire in there. And a definite barbecued sausage. Make wine. Voila, le vin rouge. And the do's and don'ts of matching food with wine. That tastes shit, doesn't it? Absolutely right. This week, it's how to spot the Merlot from the Mourvedre and the Semillon from the Sauvignon. It's, oh, oh, that's a nice one. 
as I try to teach this bottomless pit about different grape varieties. Come, fill the cup. James! And then challenge him to blend his very own wine. I think I might have cocked it up. We've been travelling northeast and have now entered the magnificent Rhone Valley. It's best known for warm and spicy reds made from the Syrah and Grenache grapes. Those are two of the best part of a thousand different grape varieties that are used to make wine throughout the world. So, which ones has James already heard of? Um, right. Seedless. Uh, red ones and green ones. Oh, you're just trying no, to be smart, okay, right. James. So take it seriously. Chardonnay is yeah. great. Um, uh, Sauvignon. Well done. The Sauvignon Blanc grape is a white grape. It gives green, sharp flavoured wines. Chardonnay is a white grape. gives softer, golden flavoured wines. So the most, the most important thing to grasp in wine is that each grape variety has a different flavour to give to the wine. Learn about the different flavours in grape varieties and you, you are already on the way to becoming a wine expert. Our first stop is Hermitage in the Northern Rhone. It's home to one of the most influential winemakers in the modern wine world. We're going to see the local Michel Chapuch here this morning. He's a seriously big cheese in the Rhone Valley. He's got hundreds of hectares of vines. He makes enormous amounts of wine from relatively cheap to fantastically expensive. But he's a very important guy. James could learn a lot from this, so I do hope he appreciates the opportunity. There's a Renault Twingo, which was never officially sold in Britain, but was considered a very interesting car. Oh, James, does it always have to be about cars? But that's, that is an absolutely perfect example of French driving and parking. Oh. You're wrecking his Renault. That's shocking. That's why you can't bring a nice car to France. And the trick to French parking is you drive around town looking for a space a foot shorter than your car, yeah. then you try and get into it. When you hit the car behind, you get out and go, it's not my fault. Sounds like the gobblers. Oh, well, taste the wine, see what you think. Why have you brought your handbag? Oh, this has got my books in it. I mean, you know, well, it's actually it's got what research or research books. Um, it's got a book with about 20 verses of the Rubai out of Omar Khayyam, I thought you might like. And it's got poetry, I've got songs in here, you know. Why didn't, I thought you, you, might... it, why didn't you leave it in the car? Then you wouldn't look like such a Jesse when you went to meet the big cheese. Well, and... well blimey, he's got a shadow. Yeah, well, excellent. See what I mean? I can tell you, he makes the most expensive wines in their own valley. I'm not surprised. Actually, that's a silver race. This is actually packed with old cars. France is very good on old cars, they're into it. This is obviously a man to be taken very seriously. Bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour. Monsieur Chapoutier is best known for his Hermitage wines. They're made from very precious Syrah vineyards and can command from around £40 a bottle to a whole lot more. In Hermitage, it is one of the oldest vineyards in France. We work with one grape, we have big diversity of soil, so we can make comparison with the same winemaking process and the same vine growing process. Monsieur Charpoutier is very, very intelligent and theatrical. From one place you can see the fourth geological period. And he knows about the wine. Mm. And I leave for the taste. And I've never seen anybody who's quite so impassioned and quite so declamatory about everything. The yeast has been created to help the decomposition of the vegetal. And he's the only person who's managed to shut Oz Clark up. He hasn't said anything. He's just stood there all wide-eyed. When you have life, you have two goals. First goal is to create the next generation. Second goal is to spread. Here we go. We go take the car. Do you we take your Willie's Jeep? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And, um, and a bottle. I think Catherine is coming with. Something to try. Yeah. She's been getting on very well with uh, Michelle. I've got all these bags with me. I mean, you're absolutely right. I'm carrying too many bags around. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. GIs didn't have handbags. Oh, that's that's it. This is fantastic. It's exactly the type of wine trip I was after. I I oh, come get... on, old man. Ah. 
God, if I was under attack in the Second World War, I'd never make it. Wines from Syrah grapes are characterised by intense richness and spiciness and ooze with blackcurrant and raspberry flavours. But the grapes only reveal these flavours once the wine is made, as James will now explain. Here in all these vineyards, we only have one grape, the Syrah, or the Shiraz, as it's more commonly known. Yeah. The, the character of the wine comes after fermentation, not from the grape itself. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. That must be a wine fact. All grape varieties love to get high. Generally, the steeper the slope, the more sunlight they get and the more flavoursome the wine. However, the unpredictable factor is rain, which can stop the grapes ripening so the bitter tannin in their skins doesn't soften. If you have a wet year, colder year, you will have some harder tannins and some people will prefer the harder tannins. OK, but that's a wine fact. Wet years give you a, a, a more tannin in the wine. A more dry, vegetal tannin. More dry sensation on the tongue. That's what yeah, the tannin exactly. does. Exactly. Yeah, yes. you have a difference. Yes. Is that a wine fact? No, it's a very complicated no, wine fact. No, just it, let me no, have a wine it's, fact. No, it's not a wine fact, because everything you say, Misha will say, well, some people have the right I know, to say but that. He's going, because Others because have the right to think something else. else. I'm trying to just remember I am an amateur. I'm actually finding this all strangely interesting. And I like the man. I think he's really great. And what he says is fantastically convoluted, but it does make sense. Well, I'm glad Michelle's fired up your interest, James, because, as usual, I'll be testing you out later on. If you fancy trying some reasonably inexpensive Rhone Valley Syrah, look out for wines with Croze Hermitage on the label. Most shops will have a spicy-flavoured one for under a tenner. Most wines aren't made of single grape varieties, they're blends, like the ones produced near the village of Saint-Maurice by father and son team Alain and Philippe Viré. What do we do? I have, well, get in the back. In the, in the, the, the yeah. truck, yeah. yeah. Domaine Viré White is usually a blend of the lesser-known Viognier, Claret, Marsan and Roussan grapes. But it's not just unusual grapes that set the Virés apart from other winemakers. They have, well, very unusual growing techniques. Um, let me guess. Human sacrifice?